Hello everybody and welcome back to the Traction Channel for another video. Have you always been wondering what on earth commentators and drivers are rambling on about during races and broadcasts? Do you also wonder what the hell I'm rambling on about half the time? There are plenty of terms used in both racing and sim racing that require pre-existing knowledge to understand what they mean. Knowing these things can not only help you with your own racing, but also help you understand more about what's happening on screen. In this video, I'm going to run through some of the basic terms you will hear being thrown around regularly so that you won't ever have to ask the question again. Let's start with BOP. BOP, or BOP, is an abbreviation for the term Balance of Performance. This is a method used by governing bodies of motorsport to try and balance out the competition and make every car as equal as possible to promote close racing. You will mainly see this in class-based GT racing such as GTE, Le Mans and National GT3 racing. The way BOP works is that certain cars are assigned extra weight to carry to slow them down if they're perceived to be too fast compared to the competition. Of course, some series are as much about car development as anything else, so don't go down the route of applying BOP, but usually in GT racing, a big part of what makes it work is that you can have 10 different manufacturers all fighting out for a win on a level playing field. It works well in general, but is often criticised for penalising those who have done the best job in terms of car development, and can also encourage teams and manufacturers to sandbag, in order to get a more favourable BOP adjustment and therefore less weight added to the car. But what if you don't know what sandbag means? Sandbagging is the term used to describe when somebody drives deliberately slowly in a practice or test session to try and hide their true performance. Think of Mercedes for example, turning down their engine power in pre-season testing and practice sessions. Because of this, they set slower lap times and make people think they're struggling for pace in order to lure the competition into a false sense of security. It also happens in esports and sim racing, where the quickest drivers will often put in extra fuel on practice servers to try and hide their ultimate pace, so that others don't know where they will be come qualifying. Of course, this doesn't always work, but it's also been used for other benefits in the past that are a little bit more controversial. Think of BOP that I was just telling you about before. If a team wants to win the Le Mans 24 hours, for example, they might choose to sandbag for an entire season of the World Endurance Championship. This will make the car look slow and others look fast, so then when the balance of performance comes into play for Le Mans, the team that sandbags will gain an advantage. Of course, this can be argued to be cheating, but it is very difficult to control and regulate, which is one of the downside that comes with using BOP. The undercut. The undercut is a pit stop strategy used in racing to try and gain an advantage over the immediate competition. When tyres get old, they often drop hugely in performance. So by pitting just before your rival and taking new tyres first, there will be a lap or two where you have the newer, faster tyres compared to their older, slower tyres. Being faster for that one or two laps before your rival pits can often make the difference and allow you to overtake them when they're making their stop. This is why in the likes of Formula 1, you often see drivers reacting immediately when the driver behind them pits to try and lose as little time as possible and prevent the attempted undercut. Logically, as there is an undercut, there also has to be an overcut. An overcut is another pit stop strategy used in racing to jump the competition, and as you might expect, it's pretty much the opposite of an undercut. If you're being held up by the car in front and are capable of going faster, you might want to try the overcut instead of the undercut. This means that you let them pit first and hope that you can then go faster in clean air than they can on cold new tyres. It may sound strange as I've just said that new tyres are faster than old tyres, but in some circumstances it's not quite that simple. Maybe the conditions are very cold and it takes the new tyres a lap or two to come up to temperature. Maybe your pace advantage was really big anyway but you just couldn't overtake. The overcut is less common than the undercut because there are less scenarios where it could be beneficial, but it is equally as viable and can often have just as successful results if done well. The Cliff you often hear in the likes of Formula 1 that a driver, usually Lewis Hamilton, has tyres that are falling off the cliff. There aren't too many circuits with actual cliffs to fall off, unless you're from Wales, so as you can imagine, this term is a metaphor. When someone describes the tyre cliff in racing, what they mean is that the tyres are worn and have reached the point where their performance has instantly become significantly worse. The car behind's tyres are in much better condition than yours. We'll keep an eye on the times. With certain types of tyres, such as the Pirellis used in F1 and F2, this point can happen very suddenly, when you see drivers out of nowhere being 3 or 4 seconds a lap slower and losing positions quickly. The reason it's described as a cliff is because of the sudden nature that the performance of the tyre drops off, and also the amount of performance that is lost. A graph marking tyre wear versus tyre performance, for example, would look very much like the edge of a cliff. Splash and dash. This one is far more literal. When you hear that somebody is needing a splash and dash, what that means is that they don't quite have enough fuel to make it to the end of the race. They will therefore need to come into the pits for a splash of fuel. 
Usually, a splash and dash is different to most pit stops, because it means the driver only requires a very small amount of fuel and no tyres because the race is almost over, so it's usually a very quick stop, with the driver keen to get back out as soon as possible and the mechanics dashing about like mad. Oh, I get it now. Push to pass. This is a feature used in some disciplines of motorsport such as IndyCar in order to spice up the action and promote overtaking. Each car has a button that is pushed by the drivers to give them a little extra power and pass the car in front, hence the name. Normally, this is regulated in a way that adds an element of strategy for the drivers and excitement for the fans. Push to pass usage is limited for each driver to either a certain amount of charges, i.e. 10 per race, or a certain amount of seconds that the button can be used per race. In IndyCar, for example, each driver has 200 seconds of usage, meaning they can have their finger pressed on the push to pass button for a total of 200 seconds throughout the race that can be used at any time. It would be like if DRS was something every driver could use 10 times, rather than every time they're within a second of the car in front. Maybe that would keep the overtaking, but stop it being called a gimmick. Anyway, that's for another video. On the subject of F1 actually, you might then be wondering what the overtake button is. The overtake button in this context is different to push to pass. In Formula 1, every car has ERS, which is the energy recovery system. It harnesses energy under braking and deploys it during acceleration, acting kind of like a boost that you would find in all the best Need for Speed games. To make things easier, I'm going to describe the unit of energy as energy thingies. Each team programs their ERS power deployment automatically, in a way that works for each track. For example, if we recover 50 energy thingies per lap under braking, we can spend 20 energy thingies on the main straight, 20 on the back straight, and the other 10 on the exit of turn 7. The overtake button is something a driver can use to manually choose when to deploy extra energy thingies that are available to them. So if they know that they're quick enough to overtake on the main straight, if they can get close enough into the last corner, they might use the overtake button to deploy extra energy on the run towards the final corner, meaning they're close enough to make the overtake stick. There is of course a drawback to this, as it means whatever extra energy thingies you use to overtake, you will need to recover by using less of it in the next few laps. This is why in qualifying you often see drivers recharging their ERS system and using zero energy thingies on their outlap, in order to prepare for a 100% of the available power on their fast lap. Crossover point. The crossover point is a term that can be used fairly generically in racing situations, i.e. what's the crossover point that it's worth taking an extra pit stop for example? What's the crossover point when I get angry enough to say something stupid over the team radio? The most common usage of the term is when there's a wet track and the crossover point is hugely important in this scenario. It's referring to the point when the track is either just getting wet enough to require wet tyres or just getting dry enough to require dry tyres. Usually, the crossover point relates to a certain lap time. For example, a dry lap time on dry tyres is 1 minute, whilst a fully wet lap on wet tyres is 1 minute 20 seconds. If it's raining and the drivers are getting slower on the dry tyres, the crossover point is the exact moment when the drivers would be faster on the wet tyres, so in this example it would probably be around when the lap times on dry tyres drop to a minute 20 seconds. It's much harder to predict the crossover point when it's the opposite way around. If the track is drying, it's very hard to judge when there will be enough grip to justify dry tyres. Usually, it takes one person with nothing to lose taking a risk and giving it a go. Other teams and drivers then use this poor sod as a guinea pig. When the guinea pig's time on dries are looking as fast as everyone else on wets, you have hit the crossover point, and within the next few laps, most of the field will likely be in to fit dry tyres as well. You're all a bunch of lemmings. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you were able to learn something new and can now have more of an idea as to what the heck everyone else is talking about. Do you have any other racing terms that you've never understood? Let us know in the comments below and we will try and make a video about it. If you enjoyed this one, leave us a like and for more racing related content make sure you subscribe to the Traction channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell to see when new videos go live. Until next time, keep it pinned, thanks for watching and have a great day.